to show you how to data log with your Dynojet PowerVision CX. What you'll need here is firmware version 2.2 or later. You'll also need the latest software from Dynojet to actually view the data logs as well. So you want to make sure that you have those. You can get them on Dynojet's PowerVision website or you can go to aftermarketassassins.com, go to the tech section, and under there we have a link to the Dynojet PowerVision download center where you can find all the latest updates uh, for software, for firmware, and whatever else you need. So start off doing that. If you're an older version of firmware, you want to check that by going to device tools and then go to device info. And you click about. And this has actually got a beta version 2.3. Anything 2.2 and up will work for this data logging procedure. I'm going to flip the key on and show you how to do this. It's really simple. We start the machine. Okay, now to data log, all you have to do is press the center button. So when you go out, go for your ride, whenever you're ready to start logging, and it's nice to keep them as short as possible. It's a lot easier to go through. Uh, if you have something that's long term that you're worried about, that you need to log, it'll log up for 10 minutes. So you have quite a while. So all we do is press the center button. And it'll say recording. The green light will be on showing you that it's still recording. Do your log, make your run, and as soon as you're done, just hit the middle button again. Show that the log is recorded. You can see that was number 34. It'll start with log number one and work its way up. That's it. You can now take your power vision over to your computer, plug it in with a USB cable, and we'll show you how to do that in just a second. All right, so we've removed the power vision from the vehicle. Kind of hard to see here, but we're going to undo the flap on the very bottom of the power vision use our mini USB cable that came supplied with it or most other ones will work if you can't find that one. We're going to plug it in, set that aside, and we're going to open up our PowerCore application launcher. So you need to have this downloaded on your Windows computer. If you do not have it downloaded, it's located at the same point you get the firmware right in the DinoJet download page. If you go to aftermarketassassins.com, click the tech, there's a link in there that brings you to the PowerVision download center. You can download all the latest things that you'll ever need along with the latest version of this software. So you will need to download this. If you go to the WinPEP data center is what you're going to need. And you really don't have to open this right now. Um, I usually just like to open the, the launcher just so it, everything opens a little quicker. What I'm going to do now is click on the folder. And right here you'll see PowerVision. Click on the Power Vision. And then you'll see all of our tune files located in here and all of our log files. Obviously, we don't want to touch any of the tune files. Um, you can see I've got quite a few logs on this uh, turbo, but we're going to go to our latest log that we just did. That's log 33. I'm going to double click this. That's going to launch this screen right here, the WinPEP 8 data center. So many people get frustrated on this point because they don't know how to make anything display. So where it says none over here on the left and the right, just click one of those. You'll see XP Turbo, scroll over to ECU, and then you have all these different parameters you can see. Engine speed's a good constant to have on there. You can go up here, you can go uh, to a double graph, a single graph, triple graph is usually what I'm on to see as many things as possible at once. That really helps out. Um, you know, you can you can take and drag this and, and set your point whatever you want. It'll show you the values. If it doesn't show you the value, um, see like right now it won't show me the value. But if I scroll with my cursor and pull this down, make sure you're in mouse pan mode right here. That's how you do that. Scroll down and that will show you the values. So sometimes that's a little frustrating as well, but just scroll down and it'll show you the peak value. 
Um, so we can view many, many parameters on this, over 30 parameters, and you can just scroll through the ones that you need to look at, that you might be having a problem with, or that you just want to look at. You know, engine RPM is huge for clutching to look at engine RPM versus vehicle speed. So engine speed, vehicle speed, obviously in that log we didn't, weren't moving, we are in neutral, so you're not going to see a whole lot in the log, but if you were moving, you'd see a lot. So that's basically it. You can actually add another graph on over the side here. So we could put that on there and display two things at the same time. I'm really not a big fan of this just because it can get messy with the um, axis here and things just don't line up exactly right. I usually keep it to one side. Don't put two things on the graph. I mean, you can if it's, you know, engine speed versus uh, vehicle speed. You know, that's, some stuff's okay to see, but sometimes it gets a little messy. So I like to leave it each individual graph what it is and just change it up uh, often to, to go through the different parameters. And then if we want to not display that you can just hit none let's say we have two graphs open at the same time we want to see two different logs and this isn't a good example either this is the first one that I did that literally shows nothing on it but so we have two different logs here and we don't really want to see one right now we just we don't want to close it but we just want to focus on one they're kind of intertwining hard to read you can actually hide them by clicking this hidden check mark over here and that'll actually hide that one until you're ready to view it again kind of a nice feature um, if you are doing your own tuning you can actually click on this on the on the log that you want to be your your main what you're viewing and go over to the c3 software and if you have a tune open the tune that you tuned with it'll actually show you in there uh, live trace if you have that available it'll actually live trace on there as well so some other features in this but the basic data logging is go out when you're ready to start logging hit the middle button when you're ready to stop logging hit the middle button again and then bring it to your computer double click on the file and one other thing I like to do is actually copy and paste these to your computer that way you have them for later use uh, say something happens to your power vision, it gets wet, it gets something, or, you know, you never know. So it's good to have a backup and keep your logs. That way you can always go back to reference something. Um, especially a good thing to log. I like to log, you know, when I first put something on and everything's running really well, it's good to have a log. And then if you ever had an issue later on, you can go back and compare that log to your one where you're having an issue. And a lot easier to see what's going on and why you're having an issue. So... Um, a lot easier for me as well if you have to send it to me and you can say here's the log from when it was running good and then here's the log right now I'm having an issue and I can usually pinpoint it within a few minutes and say hey this is what's going on. So.